Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Old School Dave from YouTube channel Dave's Game Room. It's back, and this time we're looking at Super Mario Land 2 on the Nintendo Game Boy. Dave, how are you doing? I can see you got your VCR fixed in the end, mate. So, uh, yeah, I'm doing really well. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good, yeah. It was um, it was fun. I captured this footage this morning, mate. I thought... I, I Well, you knew we were going to be covering Mario Land 2 because it's a game that you've got fond memories of as well. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. This game, I absolutely love it. On the Game Boy, as you said... This, for me, is the closest thing to the NES Mario games that you got on Game Boy. It was really, really impressive for the time. I agree. I would go as far as saying, there'll, there'll be gasps in the audience when I say this. It's in my top three Mario games of all time. It's not my favourite. It's probably my third favourite Mario game. I really liked it, mate, as we're going to get into. The stages, the music, just the whole thing. I loved the mm. game. It was a really awesome game. So... Mario Land 2. Did you ever play the first Mario Land? So let's just quickly touch on that. The segue was was so perfect then, mate, because that's exactly what I was going to say. Let's touch on the original. You kind of have to, yeah. to to then explore this game, the sequel. I hated the original. There'll be gasps in the audience again. Oh, huh? <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I just didn't like it. I didn't get on with it. It didn't feel... It's a good platformer, but it didn't feel like a Mario game to me. No, I had big issues with the first game. I played it through mostly to completion. But was it me or was Mario too fidgety and too sensitive to yes. control compared to this? Yes. Where this is more in line with him on the NES, basically, how he controlled really nicely. I mean, yeah, this is later, so obviously get, games always get later as a um, platform or the, of, or the age of a platform progresses, if, if that makes any sense. So, yeah, it does, as the developers get to grips with the, with the system. Sure, more. yeah. So it, we've got to take that into account, but yeah, you're spot on, man. Mario won. Yeah, did. it felt fidgety. It felt... It felt weird to me. Like, there was strange little stages. Wasn't you flying a plane or... or you were at or one a, point, yep. Yeah. Was it a spaceship? It was a plane, I think. Yeah, because um, you could shoot bullets, yeah. What I love about this... Now, what struck me playing this is on RetroArch, guys. I don't own a Nintendo Game Boy, but how big the sprites are. Everything looks so polished, like Mario 3. Yeah, that was one of the great things I loved about this. The graphics of this game, I actually thought were really, really good for the Game Boy at the time. As you said, the sprites are big and chunky. It's nicely detailed, actually, for a Game Boy game. And it looks great here, obviously, on RetroArch because we're running it on a nice big screen. And yeah. it, it scales up quite nicely because of how good the graphics were in the first place. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, it looks, it obviously it looks a bit pixelated because, like you say, everything's blown up. This would originally have been played on a very small screen. Yeah. Now, something that I did find with playing this today was it, it's a bit easy. I find it a bit kind of like... When I'm aware that I'm recording uh, or capturing for... Uh, you're the same, I think, mate. When I'm capturing for the benefit of YouTube, I kind of get a bit nervous. I'm like, oh, God, people are watching me. I'm going to suck. Yeah. And even under that pressure of trying to record this this uh, footage, I still kind of just cruised through. Yeah, I know what you're going to say. The platform and the level design is a bit on the sort of basic side. Uh, there, are, there are some tricky points. I mean, there was one level I loved in particular because of its music, and that, I think, was the Space Zone. But that level yeah. could get quite tricky because of the, the way the level was designed. But you're spot on. A lot of these levels, you can almost go through them without even getting out of second gear. A lot of the time, and you'll see it from this footage, guys, as it progresses, I, I just didn't even bother getting the power-ups or, or the, the coins. I, I, was just, I just cruised through. It felt a bit like Sonic the Hedgehog in that sense, where you can kind of just do that in Sonic if you get really good at the game. Sonic Sonic can be tough, but you can kind of just cruise through and not worry about the rings. Yeah, with this, you can cruise through and just get to the to the bosses at the end of each level, can't you? That's the thing. Yeah. There's nothing yeah. extra, really, that you need to worry about. I mean, yes, collecting coins will get you extra lives, but, yeah, you're spot on. Um, it's, it's one of those games where there's a lot of levels where, without even thinking about it, you can go from start to finish within within moments. Yeah, especially if you're you're so used to playing Mario games on the NES, which most of us would have been by the time we'd bought this. But I love this, uh, is it uh, Rabbit Ears? It's the carrot you pick up and then you could kind of hover. Yeah. I love all these little power-ups that you get in Mario. They're so innovative. It's super cool. It's a bit like the feather power-up, I think, that you got in Super Mario Bros. 3, where you, could, where you could basically fly, couldn't you? Or float. Yeah. yeah, I mean, when I when I played this back in the day, I borrowed it off a, off a guy in school. I instantly just thought this is Mario Three for the Game Boy. Yeah, 
I mean, I must admit, I thought this was Mario, basically, for the Game Boy because of how good it looked in comparison to the first Mario game. I don't think I'd played... Oh, no, I had played Mario 3 by this stage. I also borrowed it. I didn't actually own this game. I didn't own it until much, much later on in its life. Yeah, I played this um, quite late in its life. It'd been out a while and um, before I played this. I'm, I was very impressed after, like, mentioning earlier... I, I do this well here. Look, look, I get the three up, I think... Yeah, I, I used to love this. This just added a little bit extra to the end of a level. You complete the level, you can get a power up, or you can get some extra lives. Quite liked it. There's actually yeah, there's some cool, th cool stuff in this. Game. There's another bonus game as well, I think, where you have to hit a certain thing, and then it, if it pops a certain box, you get that power up, or if it goes off the screen, there's another end of level mini game that you can play that dif that's different from that one that I seem to remember. Yeah. Yeah. Now, talking about remembering stuff, so I got to this pumpkin zone, and me, I do not remember any of this. I can at remember. All. I can remember this level. This level's quite tricky inside. This one because you've got the guy with the Jason mask on. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, this um, one gets quite tricky because there's sections where does. you sort of stick to bits of it, if I remember rightly, later on in the level. Or is that the tree yeah. zone? I'm trying to remember which one it is. But there's bits you um, can stick to, and then you gradually fall down as as it goes on. I don't know if it's this world or this stage, mate, but um, the map or the level design is super cool in this. Yes, it is a bit basic because it's a handheld game, essentially. Well, not essentially. It is a yeah. handheld console game. Um, so, yeah, it is quite simplistic in design, but I love how varied everything is. All these cool little enemies. Like, what is that guy? Is it a Gumba wearing a, a um, <laughs> Friday mask. the 13th mask? What, what is that? <laughs> Uh, I don't know, but they've included the ghosts that you got in uh, Super Mario... Th Did they come in Super Mario 3? Or were, they, um, or were they in the first game? I can't remember seeing them in the first game. Must have been 3. I oh, I can't remember. There'll be people screaming at, the, at, at this video. But yeah, mate, I, we, we've played so many Mario games. It's I know like, they're in Mario it'll... World. Yeah. 100% Mario, then obviously in Mario Kart and the Ghost House yeah. stages. But um, this bit um, pairs me off a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but again, it's cool. It's super cool. We're playing a handheld console game here, in, and the Game Boy wasn't particularly powerful. It wasn't a powerhouse, was it? No, not at all. I mean, it was good for its time, don't get me wrong, mm. hence games being like this. This is essentially an NES game in your pocket, which back in those yes. days was amazing to be able to play games of that quality. Because we were used to those Nintendo single screen, you know, Game & Watch games, weren't we? Game & Watch. Where, where they were maybe, simplistic. Yeah. To have something like this, where it's like a full-on console-style game, was just insane, and I and I absolutely adored this game. Same. Um, and the Game Boy is something I do criticise from time to time. My memories with it aren't the best. Yeah. But there were two games that would always stand out for me, and it was Golf, Mario Golf, and this. Yeah, for me, it was Tetris and this, because obviously I got heavily addicted, as a lot of people did, to Tetris. Uh, yeah, it fantastic game. It came bundled with my Game Boy. Same I'm with mine. it did with yours. Yeah. Um, myself and my brother would play the System Link. We'd, we'd link our Game Boys together, basically, and, and play the co-op Tetris against each other. It was awesome. I did that with my late uncle as well, all those years ago it was brilliant doing that it was it was yeah. so much fun guys the game boy th this really shows the game boy off this game i mean it, it, it showed it was a, like i say not a powerhouse but extremely capable for its time dave like you say it was a fantastic console i one more thing before we tie this video up i do like the variety of enemies in this version of mario there's so many enemies you don't see in other mario games exactly like this one here that you've jumped over yeah. they're completely different I like the variety of the stages. I like the themes of the stages. It's top notch for me in terms of the, the sort of levels and the stages. It's just a bit too easy, as you say. Yeah, it is a little bit. And that's me just like nitpicking because this is a 9 out of 10 game. Like easily, easily a 9 out of 10. It was that good. And yeah, Dave, me and you, we well, we score games quite harshly, don't we? When we do give them scores, we won't throw out nines and tens at anything and everything. No, absolutely not. And the same for me. The only reason this would drop a mark is because some of the stages are too easy. Yep, spot on, mate. Thank you for joining me, Dave. And guys, check out Dave's channel. I always say this. Link in the description below. Look out for more old school and retro football and loads of other content coming to the channel. Take care.